Uh, hello everybody. Uh, today uh, we will begin with uh, chapter 3. Uh, chapter 3 is uh, being color. So being color means the member that's subjected to axial force and bending moment. So we call it being color. So if you see uh, this uh, vertical axis is axial force. Horizontal axis is moment. In the case, in chapter 2, we uh, studied column, right? So column only has some um, actual force only. So that point is regarding chapter 2. Uh, chapter 5 uh, is regarding the beam. So beam has only a uh, moment in horizontal axis. So this line is involve actual force and moment. So beam column member. It is chapter 3. If you see uh, this beam uh, column element, this element get axial force and lateral load. This lateral load cause the bending moment. So this problem is load deflection uh, analysis. We have some deflection due to this lateral load. This is a very typical beam column problem. So in chapter 3, this week uh, I will uh, cover second order deflection and second order moment and interaction equation. If we do not consider some actual force here, uh, the deflection is first order deflection, right? Delta I, delta 1. Uh, but uh, in this beam, we have some actual force here as well as lateral load. So it is called beam column. So in that case, we have a second of the deflection due to this actual force and then we will also start the interaction equation uh, from here to here we have uh, interaction curve here uh, interact between actual force and moment so equation looks like this pu pn plus mu mn alpha beta is a summer coefficient pu mu is a second order force pn is actual strength Bending stress, Mn. Okay. If you recall this kind of column, actual force applied here, and it has the initial crudeness. Okay, initially crude column with uh, delta zero at mid height. In that case, the amplification factor is one over one minus p over pe. Do you remember? Uh, we already studied, right? Then, how about beam column? Amplification factor for beam column. The amplification factor of beam column looks like this. Uh, 1 plus psi p over p e k, 1 minus p over p e k. p e k means the Euler-Bakken load, considering boundary condition. p means Euler-Bakken load at both ends are hinge. Then we call it p e. If the boundary condition is changed, then we call it p e k. So by the way, the amplification factor for beam column is like this, okay? L plus psi P O P E L minus P P. Okay? This psi depends on the boundary and loading condition. Different uh, boundary condition gives different value regarding amplification factor. In that case, if this beam column has some lateral uniform loading like this, then psi is equal to zero. This term is zero. So the Amplification factor of this case is just the same as this one. And then right hand side is fixed, psi values minus 0.4. Both sides fixed, psi also minus 0.4. If we have the concentric load at mid length, then psi value is minus 0.2, like that. Uh, we can drive all of these cases. Uh, in this lecture, I show you. Uh, some of this case, you know, to get the amplification factor. Uh, let's look at the simply supported beam column with distribution load. This is simply supported beam column because this member has actual force and lateral load. So this member is subjected to actual force and bending moment due to lateral load. Uh, in in that case, let's uh, derive uh, amplification factor. As long as we know uh, amplification factor, uh, we can get the second order uh, deflection and second order moment, right? Let's take out the free body diagram here. 
yeah, like that. So vertical reaction here is omega L over 2, right? This distance is L. So we think this deformed shape. Then P here, P here, this deflection is Y. We have internal moment, M internal like that. If we see this curve, internal moment direction must be counterclockwise, right? From this free body diagram, you can uh, establish equilibrium equation. Now let's look at external moment at this point, PY minus omega over 2x square from this lateral load and from this reaction omega l over 2x right and internal moment is minus ei white plane so this external moment and internal moment is identical each other so this is equal to this one then you can rewrite this one if we divide by ei and the let k square equal p over ei okay then you can rewrite y to prime plus k square y omega blah 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 like that this differential equation uh, you have the homogeneous solution and particular solution regarding this term so homogeneous solution as you know a sine kx plus b cosine kx referring this right hand side uh, you can uh, establish particular solution is c1x square plus c2x plus c3 it is a particular solution for uh, this type of equation. If we input a uh, YP into this left hand side, then if you compare this left hand side and right hand side, then you can get this coefficient C1, C2, C3. The result are these. Then you are the solution Y equal Y homogeneous solution, Y particular solution equal A sine KX plus B cosine KX C1. C2, C3 here, C1, X square, C2, X, and C3 like that. That is the solution. But you don't know A and B. So you need two equation to get A and B, right? So you use the boundary condition, Y, uh, 0, equal 0. Okay, that means the deflection here equal 0, right? Then how about the slope at mid length is 0, right? That is y prime l of 2 equal 0 right if you use these two equation uh, you finally get this equation second order deflection that the specific of bean column and if you let u equal k l over 2 then you can rewrite like this this one and then k l over 2 u k uh, 2 l well, like that, okay. So you can rewrite in terms of u instead of k of two. And then, where can you get the maximum deflection? Here, yeah, at mid length. So let's calculate the maximum deflection, second order deflection. So y maximum equal y l over two. From this equation, uh, instead of x, if you uh, input l over two, then you get this equation. Then uh, let's look at this. 5 omega l force and 384 ei what is this that is first order deflection simply supported beam subjected to distributed load do you remember you learned it from your undergraduate course right first order deflection then this this term must be amplification factor so it result to second order deflection okay second order deflection is equal to first order deflection times amplification factor that is the amplification factor if you use the power series secant u is 1 plus 1 over 2 u square plus 5 over blah 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 you know this power series expansion so instead of secant u you input these values here then this equation can be written as okay yeah this equation and if you recall u equal k l over 2 right then what is k square 2 p over ei right if you use p e this equation can be written like that so instead of u you can input these values here this equation here u square u force term then this equation can be rewritten by maximum equal y zero 1 plus 1.00 POP, blah, blah, blah. So, by investigation, 
1.003 is almost 1. Right? Yeah, this term is almost 1 again. So this equation can be right y0, 1, p over p, p over p square. Right? Uh, do you know what is the summation of this one? You learned uh, this one in your high school. Right? So this summation is 1 over 1 minus p over pe. Right? So here, uh, first order deflection, this one is second order deflection, equal first order deflection times something. What is this? Amplification factor. So here, amplification factor is a theoretical amplification factor. Then uh, we use some power series expansion. Uh, we make simple. So uh, this one is a design amplification factor. Okay. This one is a very close against the theoretical amplification factor, but not identical to each other. So as you see here, uh, this amplification factor, if P over PE is zero, what does that mean? This member does not have any axial force. Then this beam color becomes beam because this member doesn't have any axial force. Then beam, this term is zero, uh, this is zero, then this is one. So second order moment must be first order moment because there is no actual force. So if P over PE, the value, let's say uh, 0.5, come here, 0.5, then this term is 0.5. So second order deflection is twice of first order uh, deflection, right? Because if this value is 0.5, this amplification factor, equal to uh, what happen if p over p e is equal to one then this denominator must be zero one over zero what is that infinite okay so the amplification factor is infinite what does that mean in that case p equal p e okay all of working load if all of working load apply then it is already buckled right uh, the deflection is infinite okay if we compare this theoretical and the design amplification factor, if you see this table, this is a theoretical equation. This is design uh, amplification factor. If you see it very, very close up to here, just a little change here. Okay. Let's look at the moment. Moment is uh, minus EI Y2 prime. Okay. Yeah, it is very typical equation. Uh, if you calculate Y2 prime, then you can get this equation. The maximum moment occur at mid length L over 2. If you use L over 2 instead of X, then this equation result in this one. If you use uh, the relationship of U, so then if you rewrite this equation like that, then omega L square over 8. What is this? First order moment of a simply supported beam subjected to distribute loading, right? Now, first order moment. Then this term must be amplification factor. Okay, this is a theoretical amplification factor. In order to get uh, this maximum moment, uh, another way is uh, uh, this one. Maximum moment is first order moment plus uh, the moment due to uh, p, p y maximum. So it is alternative. Uh, that is primary moment. This one plus p times maximum deflection at mid length. Then you can also get the same equation like that. By the way, uh, from this equation, you again use the power series expansion of secant u. Then you can rewrite like this from this equation. And then you know the relationship of u. It's the same as the previous. Then you, you can rewrite p over p term like that. And then here, 1.028 is not uh, very close to 1. So uh, you have to maintain 1.028. And then you can write this following term like that. Then you have, uh, this term is almost 1. So you can rewrite like that. So uh, the summation of this one is 1 over p of p, 1. So this term can be right like that. Again, uh, 0.028 is very small. So we ignore this term. We can uh, approximately can be written as, okay, like this is equal to uh, first the moment amplification factor. This amplification factor is this one. So 1 plus psi, huh? this term. 
here psi equal to zero. Since we ignore 0.028 is approximately zero. So this one is design amplification factor. This is a theoretical amplification factor. If you compare these two in this table, let's look at this one. Uh, up to here very uh, similar. So let's look at the beam color with concentrate load. Previously, uh, we studied the distributed load, right? But now, uh, this beam column has concentrate load, Q, at the distance of A. Again, we take out the free body diagram. Okay, here, P, P, internal moment M, X, vertical reaction is Q, L minus A over L. Due to this concentrate load, we have to divide into two range like that. X equal from 0 to A, this range. And another one is X equal from A to L, this range. So we have two different range. Now we establish the equilibrium equation. Okay? This divide diagram. This term and this term. And then uh, you can get the, the general solution. Here, A and B plus plus something here c plus d plus plus something you can get this kind of general equation then you can get some uh, first derivative slope so you have one two three four four unknown so you need four equation to solve this you can get two equation from boundary condition y equal zero from this one zero from our right hand side by l x equal l here equal zero you have the continuity condition at this point y a from this equation from this equation a equal zero right yeah, deflection zero point a and then slope here also must be uh, identical this deflection between two is identical slope between from this equation from this equation must be identical okay so you have a, one, two, three, four. You have a four equation. You can get A, B, C, D. Because of a limited time, I do not show every detail, but you can refer to the textbook. You can see the every detail. So I'd like to show some general procedure here. Then finally, you can get the uh, second order deflection like that. Uh, four range this one. Okay, four range uh, that one you can get another second order deflection. So you have two different equations due to the concentrated loading. So let's calculate Y maximum. Y maximum occur when A must be the mid length L of two and deflection occur at mid length also. So concentrated load must be applied at mid length. Then maximum deflection also occur the mid length. So, a must be L of 2 at x equal L of 2, right? Then uh, you can use any equation. You can use this equation or that equation. You can get this equation. If you input here, A equal L of 2, x equal L of 2, then you can get this equation, maximum deflection. What is this? First deflection, when the uh, beam is subjected to the concentrated load at mid-length. Do you remember? Yeah, from undergraduate course you remember right ql uh, cube 48 ei then this one must be amplification factor again uh, we have the power series expansion tangent u equal u plus 103 u cube something blah 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 if you uh, input this one and make simplification then there is some 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 several step okay from here to here then you can rewrite like that it is somewhat approximate equation one over one minus p o p e that is amplification factor how about the maximum moment is equal to uh minus e i y to prime if you get the result is this q l over four that is the first of the moment right that is amplification factor okay so if you use the power series expansion, this one, and then uh, make simple, then you can get this equation. 1 minus uh, 0.18 P over P, 1 minus P over P E. So minus 0.18, it cannot be ignored. So you have to maintain this term. Uh, for simplicity, we use 0.2 instead of uh, 0.18. Okay, that is the amplification factor. In the case, the psi value is minus 
0.2. If you see the table, is this one. This is a theoretical value, that is design value. Let's compare. They are very similar. Can you accept this design value when you compare to theoretical ones? Yes, uh, we can accept it because they are very similar. <music>